Following Sean Diddy Combs' arrest last week, it was revealed that federal agents confiscated 1,000 bottles of lube and baby oil from Combs' properties following the raids on his home. Here's how Diddy's lawyer, Mark Agnafilo, tried to justify the apocalyptic amount of baby oil. Take a look. Been with him since 8 o'clock this morning, um, and it's about almost 3 o'clock now. He's just laser focused. Uh, he's engaged. He's helpful. Uh, he's confident. You know, we're, we're going through our defense as we do every day. Um, and he's, his spirits are relatively good. How do you explain the baby oil and the lubricants? A thousand bottles of baby oil? Uh, I don't think it was a thousand. I think it was a lot. I mean, there's a Costco right down the street. You know, I think Americans buy in bulk, as we know. Um, and you know this is this is consensual adults doing what consensual adults do. You know we we can't get so puritanical in this country to think that somehow sex is a bad thing because if it was there'd be no more people. Okay, so we'll get to <laughs> the rest of that in a second. On the good spirits point, Diddy was <laughs> Diddy was placed on a suicide watch recently, and Agnafilo even wrote a bail proposal earlier this week that the conditions Combs is living in are horrific. But on the lube, in the indictment, here's a refresher, Combs transported and caused to be transported commercial sex workers across state lines and internationally to engage in days long freak offs. The document describes freak offs as elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged, directed, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. Victims and employees were forced to participate through extreme coercion. The indictment also notes including physical, emotional, and verbal abuse. It also alleges that victims believed they could not refuse Combs' demands without risking their financial or job security or without repercussions in the form of physical or emotional abuse. Combs would use the recordings from the freak offs as collateral against victims. Williams said Tuesday, supplies for these performances were found during the raids on his homes, including narcotics and more than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Now keep in mind, Agnafilo didn't give any sort of justification for the drugs, videos, or guns, which included three AR-15s with the serial numbers scratched off, but could you get all of that at Costco as well. That's the question that we have here. But I guess not because Costco rebuked their claims that Diddy bought all of his baby oil at Costco. In response to Agnafilo's claim that the baby oil could have been purchased in bulk at a Costco, the retailer told TMZ in a statement that they do not sell baby oil in any of the United States locations. Is that the Big, that's the big takeaway here, I guess. No, okay, I didn't know that. And now I'll know in case uh, anybody's planning a freak off. Uh, so I do have some thoughts on that. But at first, I was like, why is he mentioning that he was with him from eight in the morning to three p.m. and that he was fine? Then you find out, oh right, uh, like he's thinking of committing suicide. That's why he's saying, no, no, he's fine, he's fine. Uh, and uh, so we'll get back to that in a second too. Um, the buying in bulk line was hilarious. It was but, hilarious. The yeah. buying in bulk defense. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Americans I mean, buy in bulk. Who doesn't have a thousand rolls of toilet paper <laughs> right. in their house right and now? And also, do you think, I mean, Costco, yeah, all right, who among us? Yeah. <laughs> or a thousand um, uh, toothpaste uh, exactly. tubes, right? The, uh, just in case. It's, it's just, just in case. Possible. Well, they don't sell it. That's the other <laughs> thing. A, I don't believe he lives that close to a Costco. And B, I love that Costco doesn't sell it. Right, which is <laughs> yeah. great. But that buy in bulk line wasn't as good as. I mean, look, we have to have sex, otherwise there wouldn't be any more people. Right. I mean, <laughs> Diddy like, did it to save humanity. That's like Donald Trump <laughs> saying all those him. dead people who won't come back. Right? Yeah, well, that's also true. <laughs> yeah. uh, look, but the line he said in the middle is really the heart of this. He said, look, they're consensual adults. And to me, so they put all the salacious part of the freak offs in the story. And I, I actually don't find them relevant. Um, except for some parts of it make me believe that it was partly consensual. So to me, what matters is 
consensual or not consensual. Now, of course, other parts make it appear to be non-consensual, and that's what we should be focusing on. Well, he's the defense attorney, so he's right. going to say that exactly, that it was consensual, because that's the crux of the case, right? But when you hear these allegations from Williams, it makes it seem like, eh, might not have been so consensual if you felt like your job was being held over you. Uh, so I would not even inch toward considering it consensual. And we also saw a story today that one of the tapes is now an investigator's possession. And we saw a couple months ago uh, a tape of Diddy chasing his partner or, or girlfriend, somebody, an associate, down the hallway of a hotel after she tried to escape because he was locking her in there, who knows what they were doing, and assaulted her physically and dragged her back to the hotel room. So this is not somebody I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt to, especially on all this stuff. When you have multiple people alleging the same set of facts. Yeah, I want to be clear. So after we showed that tape to you guys, I did a segment on it as soon as it came out. I was like, I'm done with Diddy. Like, there's this is the open and shut in terms of what kind of a person he is. So, which was huge because yeah. you were all Diddy oh, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, so oh, who's my daddy, Puff? Right. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> who's my Diddy, P? Right. Um, anyways, um, so, but the reason I bring that uh, the consensual non consensual part is like I don't care if it's consensual if, if you're doing freak offs and you bought a thousand bottles of lube I don't care you recorded it I don't care right but if you're using that as collateral against the victims or you force them into it or like what are we doing with a thousand bottles of lube it, it like was he sex trafficking them that's one of the charges so what I'm a little bit surprised is that there isn't more detail on that part. Like I get the salacious stuff is getting everybody's attention, right? But yeah, but did he, like I, it's not clear from the stories, did he use the women, uh, uh, like was he a pimp? That's what I'm trying to get at, right? Was he using the women to, uh, in, uh, in getting Johns to come in and pay for sex? And it was that against their will, in which case, open and shut. This is this thing's totally over, right? So I'm a little frustrated that they're like, I get it, it's funny, the thousand bottles of lube. And it makes you think that maybe they're doing this in a professional way, right? They're manufacturing this particular industry, right? But get to the heart of it, which is the crimes, as opposed to, oh, I can't believe he's such a freak and he was. You know, doing this or that while he was watching. I don't care about that part. Just a little bit more context on the defense attorney. So he and his colleague are known for representing people like this. Um, they represented a former Goldman Sachs managing director, the NX IVM founder, Keith Rainier, who was convicted of sex trafficking. Uh, and that legal team, him and his partner, brought together the who's who of criminal defense lawyers known for aggressive approaches and representing men accused of violent sex crimes like. Arthur Adala, um, who represented Weinstein, and Jennifer Bonjean, who represented R. Kelly and Bill Cosby. Yeah, I, I get it. First of all, they're lawyers, they gotta do their job, I understand. They didn't have to take those cases, okay, whatever, I'm gonna let that go. Uh, and they have a certain expertise, and P. Diddy needs their expertise, I get all that. Having said that, when you hire the guys who always defend, you know, terrible, Sex, you know, criminals. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, at least, let's yeah, put it this way: if you're, you're in a lot of trouble. If you're like, if you're, if, you know, indicted for murder, you're going to get a, a, someone with the expertise if you can afford it in murder cases, and that would be mean that they defended lots of murderers. So I mean, it's just the way the legal. System I, I hear you, but also. Are these the best people to do that? Because, because they Weinstein keep losing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah they, well, that's the argument, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. And not only that, but it does like evoke, like, hey, I don't worry, guys. I uh, hired Weinstein and Cosby's lawyer. <laughs> right. Now I think you should probably worry. Right. It's not a great look uh, on. I think it's situation. more what George is saying is that they, you know, they like eventually you got to send that picture down to the miners <laughs> if they keep losing. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.